So good afternoon to everyone and welcome to today's virtual design review panel meeting. This is the third item on the agenda. I'm Joe Bordoloni, host of this meeting, but panel member David Colusio will be the chair. In addition to the panel members, we have the applicant team, city staff, members of the public, and the media observing this meeting. Members of the public are welcome to observe the meeting only. This session is being recorded and will be uploaded to the DRP webpage. Just a reminder to please keep your microphones muted if you are not speaking. Thank you, and David, please begin the meeting. Thanks. Uh, good afternoon and welcome. Joe, can you confirm that this session is being recorded? It is. And are there any changes to the agenda today? There are not, no. And are there any uh, declarations of a conflict of interest by any of the panelists members? I'll take silence as that there are none. So the third item on the agenda today is the review of 22 Cannon Street East. The lead planner on this file is Jennifer Allen. Good afternoon, Jennifer. We're ready for your presentation and please keep the presentation under 10 minutes. Uh, thank you, David. Share my screen. Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer Allen. I am a planner on the urban team and will be presenting the proposed development for 22 Cannon Street East. Uh, so the proposal consists of renovations to the existing office building, including a new entrance on the north facade with an accessibility ramp, new basement window openings, a new ground floor patio area, and a one-story addition to the, uh, to the top of the existing four-story building. Um, and I will note that a minor site plan was uh, submitted and it, under process for uh, the proposed renovations with the exception of the one story addition to the top of the building. Um, and so, but uh, the, the proposal was uh, modified to include that addition, which uh, will require uh, the submission of a site plan uh, amendment application as well as uh, going before the design review review panel. Um, and so the proposed one story addition will contain a restaurant and outdoor patio um, and it should be the focus for uh, today's review. Uh, so the subject property is located at the um, the south southwest corner of Cannon Street East and Houston Street North. Um, this is a view of the subject property looking south on Cannon Street East. Um, this is the view of the subject property looking northwest on Houston Street North. The view of the subject property uh, looking west from the intersection of Cannon Street East and Houston Street North. Uh, and the view looking southwest from the intersection of Cannon Street East and Houston Street North. Uh, and then this is uh, the view of Houston Street looking south from the intersection of Cannon Street East and Houston Street North, as well as the view of Houston Street North looking north from the subject property. And the view of Cannon Street East looking northwest from the subject property. So this is the uh, site plan and landscape plan for the proposal. This is the east elevation, west elevation, south elevation, and the north elevation. Um, and then also there are the south elevation and north elevation of the of the proposed one story addition. Uh, so this is a contextual rendering uh, to show the the proposal uh, in the context of the surrounding area, as well as um, from a different angle looking east on Cannon Street East. Uh, so the subject property is identified as a downtown urban growth center on Schedule E of the Urban Hamilton Official Plan and is located within the downtown mixed use area on Schedule E1 of the Urban Hamilton Official Plan. So the Downtown Urban Growth Center shall be a preeminent node in Hamilton due to its scale, density, range of uses, function, and identity. It shall generally have a higher, the higher density within the city with a minimum overall density of 250 
persons and jobs for Hector. It shall be designed with a strong pedestrian focus to create a comfortable and animated pedestrian environment. The downtown mixed-use area shall serve as a central focus for the city by creating a sense of place. Retail and service commercial uses are a key element in maintaining that function and ensuring the continued vibrancy of the downtown. New commercial development shall be designed and oriented to enhance the street life of the downtown. And so some urban design policies are respecting existing character development patterns, built form and landscapes, promoting quality design consistent with the locale and surrounding environment, contributing to the character and ambiance of the community through appropriate design of streetscapes and amenity areas, and compl complementing uh, the existing massing patterns, rhythm, character, color, and surrounding context. Uh, so the subject lands are located within the downtown Hamilton secondary plan and are uh, designated as downtown mixed use. A small portion of the subject lands is uh, within the uh, pedestrian focus area, which is kind of intended for along James Street. Uh, so the major uh, policy themes and urban design policies uh, within the downtown mixed use designation are protecting and conserving built heritage resources, compatibility with the context of the surrounding neighborhood, complementing the traditional patterns of fenestration in adjacent buildings, and integrating roof design with the building architecture. Um, so the subject property is zoned D1, uh, which is the downtown central business district and permits various commercial uses, including office uses and restaurants. A minimum building height of 7.5 meters is required and a maximum building height of 44 meters is permitted in accordance with uh, Schedule F, Figure 1. Uh, so the specific areas of discussion today would be, does the proposal complement the existing functions of the neighborhood? Does the proposal conserve cultural heritage resources? And does the proposal complement and animate existing surroundings through building design and placement, as well as through the placement of pedestrian amenities. Uh, so that concludes my presentation. Thank you. I'll turn it over to the uh, consultant to make their presentation. Again, please keep it under 10 minutes. All right, thank you, David. Just give me one moment here to share my screen. All right, can everyone see that okay? Great. Yep. All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Stephanie Mardich, and I'm a planner and associate with MHBC Planning. And with me today is Mark Buckley, a partner at PEG Architects. So we'll be joint presenting today on this application. Uh, thanks, Jennifer, for a great presentation. And we'll get started and keep it brief and try not to duplicate uh, too much of the material that was already presented. All right, so this is just a brief outline of what we'll be covering today. And so I just wanted to provide a little bit more context today on the background of the project. As Jennifer mentioned, uh, this site was subject to a minor site plan application uh, and all of the technical reports and plans as part of that were previously approved. And that was really for the renovation of the existing four story portion of the building. Uh, the difference between the application and the one we see today is uh, the addition of the one-story building uh, on top for a proposed restaurant and patio use. So we'll focus on that portion today. So one of the unique portions of this site, obviously, is the heritage component. Uh, the site has a really unique history and was owned by several owners within the city. Uh, and it is actually two buildings. Uh, the one was a four-story building and the larger portion of the building, which is the focus of what we're talking about today, uh, is a uh, was actually built around 1929, and it's an industrial vernacular building with Art Deco influences. Uh, so that building is much larger on the site. It's more imposing and takes up uh, the majority of the streetscape that you'll see in the upcoming photos. Um, and then the property has cultural heritage value or interest because of its physical design values historical associated values and contextual values. So the property is listed on the city's register of non-designated properties and it was added to that list in 2014. 
and is also included in the Hamilton Downtown Built Heritage Inventory. Uh, as part of the previous application, a cultural heritage evaluation report was completed uh, and an updated report is being prepared for the proposed addition. And that will be addressed through the, we have to go through the continuous, continuation of the site plan process and a heritage permit as well uh, for the retrofits that are proposed. Uh, Jennifer provided a good summary of the changes. Um, limited exterior renovations really are proposed. So for example, replacement of some of the broken uh, damaged windows, uh, maintenance updates, and the addition of an entrance and ramp along the uh, Cannon Street frontage, uh, really for accessibility improvements to the building. Stephanie, I, I, I'm not seeing any change, slide changes. I'm still stuck on number four. Is that the correct slide? Yes, sorry. Okay. We're moving on to the photos here. So I'll just, I can just walk through some of those if that's helpful on this slide. So um, photo number one is along Houston Street as is photo two. So you can see there's an existing entrance uh, that's going to be maintained. And then if you look at photos three and four, that's the view from Cannon. So there's going to be a second entrance added here along with a ramp for, that's where the ramp for accessibility will be, is on this location here. There are any specific questions on these? I'm happy to answer those, or we can carry on. We'll have questions after. Okay. And this just shows where those photos are taken from. So again, the two from Canon and two from Houston. So I'll just touch briefly on the policy framework as uh, Jennifer provided a really great overview. So this, this site here, this shows the outline. So it is designated primarily downtown mixed use, the portion that's focused uh, for the application today. And a small portion is that pedestrian oriented focus as well. Uh, generally, the proposal implements the direction of the urban Hamilton official plan and the downtown secondary plan by providing an office and commercial building and contributing to the mixed use environment of the area. So this really is a summary of the urban design policies and goals that apply to the site. Again, I won't go through these in too much detail, but we have reviewed all of these as part of the proposal in our design response. Um, so really focusing on creating a pedestrian oriented environment, contributing to the mixed use area, um, and ensuring that really this proposal is compatible with the existing built form of the area. So some specific policies that apply as it relates to cultural heritage uh, in the downtown. So as it relates to redevelopment in downtown areas, um, encouraging consistent street orientation, maintaining established building lines, supporting continuous street walls and encouraging building heights that reflect what's existing in the area and encouraging forms that are stepped back at upper levels. So you'll see that as we work through the proposal, but the, the height is generally consistent with what's surrounding in the area. Um, and it's reflective of both the existing building uh, and the surrounding area. And the upper level uh, addition has been stepped back as well. Um, so just a little bit more detail as well. So this specifically provides policy direction for alterations to heritage resources. Um, so additional items here, such as maintaining the original facade, which will be the case in this proposal and replicating original parts and materials uh, wherever possible and removing any elements that aren't part of that original building design. So Mark will speak to that in a little bit more detail when he talks about the building materials. And just generally, the policy direction speaks to adaptive reuse of buildings in the uh, downtown area for specifically for mixed use, commercial and office type uses as well. Um, all right, so just uh, for a design response. So in our opinion, the proposed development allows for the redevelopment protection and enhancement of a key piece of the city's built heritage. Uh, respects the existing cultural heritage features by both adapting and reusing a heritage building. And that's for the mix of uses, commercial office space and the restaurant. Uh, the existing building will be uh, will remain and be restored and enhanced. It's been vacant for a while. Um, the proposed addition is stepped back at the top floor, as I mentioned, and that the intention of that really is to minimize any impacts on both the existing building and the surrounding area. And contemporary materials are proposed for the addition including steel, metal, and glass. So overall, the proposal will adaptively reuse an existing heritage building in the downtown for commercial uses, and it implements the objectives and policies of both the official plan and the downtown secondary plan. 
So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Mark, who will walk through uh, the building design and again, focus on that building addition. Thanks, Stephanie. Um, yeah, I think uh, you uh, made oh, covered a lot about uh, sort of the historical context of the building. I think it's uh, quite evident that it's a, a really nice piece of architecture in the downtown core. And uh, th this project is very much about um, just sort of reinstating it and uh, restoring it with um, new windows, uh, which will which will go a long way. Um, a lot of the building systems are being completely uh, revamped to allow uh, new uses, including the restaurant on the roof. And uh, in terms of the addition, um, it's very much sort of picking up on uh, an industrial language and that section of the building that has operated uh, as an industrial use for uh, its lifespan. And uh, you can see that with the use of a lot of black steel. Um, the windows in the addition will be the same style and material as what's used uh, on the rest of the building. And it's um, you know meant to complement the existing building, obviously not meant to uh, replicate that era and style of architecture, but um, it just meant to uh, complement it, but also, you know, um, give some refinement to it as well. Uh, the main purpose of the addition was to be is for it to be a restaurant, and with that is a, a roof terrace for uh, for outdoor dining. Um, that naturally created a step back from the Cannon and Houston Street facade, and um, I think you can tell in uh, Stephanie if you wanted to flip to uh, those context renderings, really gives a sense of its presence at the street level and uh, what that step back does to, um, you know, not make it feel top heavy or uh, make it appear much different than it does now. You can sort of see a hint of what's up there, um, which I think is, which is attractive and sort of animates it at the street level, but um, doesn't take away from the facades as they as they currently are. Um, so yeah, that that sort of covers our approach to it. Um, the materials that we're uh, we're going to use, uh, it will tie into that new entrance piece on Cannon Street with the ramp. Um, very similar materials and similar aesthetic there. Um, so yeah, I think that sort of um, captures what uh, what our intent was with with the addition. And yeah, just we have another view here from Cannon Street. Um, the access points to the addition were basically extending the existing staircases up. Uh, on those portions, we're going to use reclaimed brick so that, again, um, we're never trying to blend new and old together. There's a very definitive sort of line between the two. Uh, but in the instances where we have to, uh, we're going to use reclaimed brick to, to make it look uh, sort of as seamless as possible. And then right. maybe uh, the floor plan, Stephanie, just to yes. show that at the roof level. So on this page, Cannon Street is top of page. And you can see that sort of cross hatch pattern indicating the roof terrace. Um, the, the original building on the left side of the page um, that will, which was the original brick and wood structure that will remain uh, untouched. The addition is just over top of that center block and then the uh, the main block uh, on the uh, Houston Street side. And these are the elevations showing the addition in that charcoal color. And you can see the uh, window grid really being transferred up to the addition as well. This elevation is not really visible like that. That's uh, an alleyway between the neighboring buildings.
and this is more of a close-up elevation of the addition itself, showing a little more detail of the windows, metal panel, and that sort of structure that just extends over the roof terrace. Great, thanks, Mark. And I think if I can just add one more thing, uh, just on the addition, just in terms of the rooftop terrace, uh, any landscaping or anything proposed for that area uh, will be temporary and seasonal. So there's no permanent plantings or anything like that proposed for that area as well. I'm not sure, Mark, if you had anything you wanted to add. Uh, no, I think I think that covers it. Okay, great. So with that, we'll uh, wrap up. And generally, we feel that this will allow for this existing vacant building to be retrofitted for a mix of commercial uses as discussed. Um, the proposal conserves the building and as many features as possible while also bringing the building up to current standards. Uh, the proposed addition will be complementary in terms of design and building materials and further implement the objectives of both the urban Hamilton official plan and the downtown secondary plan. So thanks everyone and we're happy to answer any questions. Okay, uh, thank you, Stephanie and Mark. Uh, I'll turn it over to Ted for questions. Yeah, I, I guess, thanks very much for your presentation. Um, my first question, I have lots of questions, but I'll ask this first question maybe to the city of Hamilton. Um, are we, as, is the panel meant to comment on the forecourt space, the um, developments that uh, are leading up to the restaurant or simply this upper upper floor addition at this point in time. Not quite sure. I, yeah, I think the focus should be the proposed addition, as that was what triggered the requirement to go to before the panel. So, uh, and all of the what we're seeing has already been approved as in, and is under construction, from what I can tell. Is that correct? The minor site plan. Uh, never actually officially uh, received final approval, but it was pretty much at the, the it was pretty much ready for final approval. Uh, but this change has, has meant that the uh, minor site plan will need to be bumped up to a uh, site plan amendment application. Okay. And was the project reviewed by the former uh, design review panel? Uh, no, it wasn't. Okay. so. We're, we're commenting on the restaurant at the upper level addition, but not the forecourt that's part of the urban space or the reorientation of the, of the, of the building designed to Cannon Street. We're not commenting on any of that. Uh, I would just say that the focus should be the, the restaurant. Okay. All right. Thanks for clarifying that. Um, I'll do my best. Um, the questions I have, understanding the building design, um, uh, the the existing main entrance now looks like it goes down to the lower floor and has become an exclusive access point for that lower suite. And the entire building has been reoriented to Cannon Street with a new entrance on on that facade to the upper level or what is what was originally the arrival level. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, and in in terms of somebody, if if able-bodied people are arriving to go to the restaurant or the upper floors, how do they get there? They would use the staircase at the new Cannon Street entrance. Okay. And then they would go through that vestibule and then to the elevator and go up. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and somebody uh, who has limited mobility is in a wheelchair, how do they arrive? They use the ramp, which takes them down to another entry at that sunken terrace level, which leads into a vestibule with access to the elevator at that point. Okay. And, and the, the new painted steel structure up at the restaurant level, um, What's the intent of, the, of those elements? Um, yeah, I think just to provide some uh, little bit of enclosure to that space. Um, you know, I guess I won't comment on how a future tenant might use it, um, whether or not they bring lights from it, whether or not that would be permitted. I, I don't really know how it would be used in that sense, but, um, you know, just 
just to sort of frame that that space so that there was a bit of a feeling of intimacy between the addition and, and the parapet um, rather than just feeling like you're filling it onto a roof. Okay. And further to that, is is this being developed as a speculative um, restaurant space, i.e. you don't currently have an operator who's um, committed, or are we just not seeing the design that's being developed for the restaurant at this point? I would say the former, unless uh, the owners can uh, comment otherwise, but I think it's, uh, it's the intent is for a restaurant, but um, nothing finalized yet. Okay, and then last question on page 14, which is your axiometric, um, it shows the massing, um, it covers an area where the washrooms are on the lower levels, but then in your plan, it doesn't cover the upper massing, which is the subject of this application the planning doesn't seem to cover that area it's open roof area which which one should am i correct that that there's a discrepancy there and which one should we be what's the intent stephanie would you be able to share if the roof level would would be the best to look at yeah just give me one second here So there's that one, and then the roof level. So right where the courtyard is, uh, under the S in floor plans, if you follow that down, it looks like that's open roof. And maybe I'm misreading the plans, but what's is the intent to cover right to um, to the uh, northern uh, wall exterior? What I think happened here is, um, Stephanie, I think maybe you've used a previous iteration where, so basically that space that we're talking about, it's going to be mechanical space used for uh, rooftop yeah. units. At some point we decided, let's enclose that. So we took that building envelope and pushed it to the, uh, the parapet there. So the area directly above our typical washrooms at each level, that will be a mechanical room inside mechanical penthouse. So the axonometric is the intent. That's correct. Yeah. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Those are my questions. Uh, Jennifer Sison. Thank you. Um, thanks, Mark Stephanie, and Jennifer for your presentations. Um, I guess just building on Ted's first question uh, for what exactly we're reviewing, would would the consultants still like us to provide comments on the overall site plan? I feel like this is going to be a, a shorter meeting if we only talk about that fifth story addition. Thanks, Jen. I think that's a great question. Um, just to provide a little more context, as Jennifer mentioned, this still is subject to a site plan application. Uh, so we have made a submission on that. Uh, so we still will be receiving staff comments on the site plan, uh, the landscape plan, and, and other plans as well. Um, I think that being said, if, if there are, you know, general comments, um, we're definitely open to to hearing those as well. I think just, again, as Jennifer Allen mentioned, the focus really is uh, kind of, the, I guess, the trigger for the design review panel is the, the addition on the rooftop. But that being said, if there are other comments, um, we're happy to hear those as well. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, so building on that, I was wondering uh, if you could about what the design intent and like the desired use is for the Cannon Street frontage, all of the space in front of the building? Yeah, I'll probably just share my screen here again, if that's all right. So there was a conceptual plan here. I think we actually skipped over this one. So this is a good question. Uh, so we proposed kind of a pedestrian plaza and uh, hardscaped area here. A significant portion um, of what's currently existing today is going to be occupied by a lower level terrace um, and that addition of that ramp uh, into the building. So currently a significant portion of that area will no longer kind of function the way it does today. Um, the remainder of the site, there's an existing hydro transformer uh, over on this corner. And then the idea is to basically enhance pedestrian connections from both of the street frontages uh, through the use of hardscaping to this new entrance on Cannon. Uh, and there's also entry signage in a concrete wall feature proposed right at the intersection uh, to improve the, the overall feel of that intersection in that corner. 
Thanks, Stephanie. Um, I also saw removable bollards on kind of the left hand side of the plaza there. Is this area intended to like, is the reason it's paved to for vehicular access or? Could, yes, that's a good question. So the vehicle access right now is is located right here. Uh, it does function as a parking lot currently, um, obviously recognizing what's intended here in the overall area. Um, we recognize that, you know, just maintaining a concrete parking lot in this area is not, not the best use of this space. Um, but that being said, this access is not proposed to be formally closed off. So it will be open for, for example, uh, for a drop off or a delivery or things like that. So this space will still be available for that and, and for temporary vehicles if needed. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, my final question was about suite 101. Uh, I was wondering if that's intended to be commercial or if you could speak to its uh, intended use. The one on the, sorry, suite 101, this one here. Yep. The one kind of overlooking Houston Street. Mark, can you speak to that? Um, I know the possibility of of retail had been discussed. Um, not sure how realistic that is. Um, so I probably say um, office use, but uh, it's it's sort of flexible in that way. Thanks. That's all my questions. Uh, Eldon. Is Eldon on the Available to. I don't know if he's he had here. a conflict, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, Joey, then I think it's uh, Joey will be the next analyst. Speaking to uh, Jennifer. We can barely hear you, Joey. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna have to put my AirPods on. Can you skip me, please? Um, Jennifer Mallard. Uh, sure. Thank you, David, and thank you for your presentation. Um, I, I'm going to uh, restrict my comments or question to the restaurant, and, and you clarified for Ted that uh, there's no restaurant provider in place yet. Uh, I would think, though, that um, you've already made some assumptions about where the kitchen is and where washrooms are. And I'm jumping to the conclusion that the washrooms might be stacked over the washrooms below, which would so it gets back to to that little infill piece that that we talked about on the on the axo. Um, um, I'm guessing that uh, there are no presumed windows or layout for that area yet. Is that correct? That's correct. We will leave the washroom layout up to uh, whatever tenants. Moves into that space. Okay, that's that. That's all my questions. Thank you. Uh, Hoda. Uh, hi. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, so, my question is more related to the landscape of the ground level. Um, I was wondering the plaza uh, that is more should be, uh, I don't know, it's designed to be. Uh, mixed use for pedestrian and sometimes for the cars, as I understand. Is that right? Thanks, Hoda, for the question. Um, it's not really intended for vehicles. We're just at this point not closing off the formal access. Uh, the primary function of the space is really to enhance the pedestrian connectivity with the with the street frontages. Mm -hmm. and, and then provide that patio space as well, that lower terrace area. Mm -hmm. And another question is, uh, is uh, were there any limitations to have more uh, green spaces and planting areas in that plaza? Uh, good question. Uh, it's not limited at this point. I know we previously through the application uh, worked with the city primarily on the Houston street frontage. That was the location of adding uh, street trees and additional landscaping um, to enhance that frontage. Um, and then in terms of, we did consider, for example, street trees along Cannon Street. Uh, the challenge in that location is there's significant infrastructure, for example, hydro lines and things like that, and the hydro transformer that make that frontage uh, more challenging um, to enhance that frontage there. So that's why the focus was on the Houston Street frontage for plantings. Mm -hmm. And that is about the street trees. What about the 
the planting areas inside the site? Yeah, so there is some plantings proposed. Um, I actually have a detail of the landscape plan here. Give me a second. It's not the clearest visual, but it does provide, uh, so there's significant plantings proposed along the build, uh, not the building edge, but the terrace edge. Um, and then there's some plantings at the corner and then at the pedestrian entrance uh, into the site. Um, there was some consideration as well for some additional planters uh, throughout some of these spaces as well. Okay, thank you, that's for me. Um, Joe, are you able to ask questions now? I think so. Is this better? Yep. Okay, great. I just I want to again thank Jennifer, Stephanie, and Mark for the presentations. Um, is, is this, uh, Stephanie, you had mentioned that this is a listed property. Um, the the city's uh, map is showing a designated property. Uh, was it listed now designated? That's a good question. Um, Joey and I may defer that one over to Jennifer because I do know that there was an ongoing process for that. Okay. Um, I'm just not one hundred percent sure of where that process is at this point. I can confirm that the property is designated now. Designated. Okay. Thank great. Um, so that designation would have come with a list of heritage attributes. Um, I can tell by your presentation that you're um, closely considering those heritage attributes. Um, and so I'm wondering if the conservation strategy. I know you're updating the cultural heritage impact assessment. If it's restoring the building back to its 9/11 condition, or its 1929 condition, um, or it's if a good, it's a mix of both. I'm just. I'm at, yeah. Okay. Yeah, my understanding is this portion of the building is the 1929 portion. Um, okay. And I don't know if there were any specific attributes or things that you were thinking of. I know the focus of this portion of the building is the Houston facade, um, and yeah. that's generally being maintained and restored. Okay. And the um, the Cannon Street facade, um, that one is is in the previous proposal. You had mentioned that it was going to be reconstructed or rebuilt. Is that still the case for the updated proposal? For the Cannon Street facade. Yes, I think that's the one that you were referring to, or was it the Houston? So Mark can correct me, but my understanding for the Cannon Street facade is uh, replacement of the windows and then the addition of that new entrance uh, technically would appear at the second level with the ramp addition. Okay. I believe that's all that's proposed there, unless Mark, there's anything else. That's right. And there actually has already been in the past uh, year or so some work done to that facade. Um, a lot of the the concrete pilasters were falling and, and concrete was falling off. So those have been repaired. So except for the windows in the new entrance, that Cannon Street facade has been restored and actually painted. The uh, concrete uh, parging has been painted. So that, that is some work that's already been done. And then obviously what we're proposing would be uh, further work. Right. So will the, okay, thank you. Will the Houston, Street facade windows be fully restored or will they be replaced as well? They're all, sorry. Yeah, not to confuse terms. All windows are being replaced. All windows are being replaced. Okay. Is there a document and salvage report out there as well? Um, that's a good question. I don't believe one has been done for this site, but the cultural heritage evaluation was done. Um, and just on the windows, I, I know that that um, replacement has already been um, vetted and approved by the city and that process okay. is, is ongoing and the windows generally look uh, the same as what's what's existing. Um, there so, were several, I think, specifically around the ground level of the building that were damaged as well. Right. Well, so the windows will be replaced with new steel windows? Yeah. Replaced but right? really? aluminum, aluminum, aluminum. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They, you know, they will have, you know, insulated glass units. They won't be, uh, Single pane steel, but um, yeah, they are they are definitely meant to replicate the existing ones as close as possible without actually doing steel windows, which uh, you know just come with all sorts of energy issues. Yeah, no, I understand that. Um, Joey, so we'll, so, yeah. sorry, can I just uh, I wanted to let you know that the uh, heritage permit was received for that alteration. Okay, so the heritage permit's been received and approved and. And, As it relates and, to the windows, yes. Okay, I then I, I won't provide um, further comment for that. Thank you. That's all my questions. Uh, Yana. 
Thank you. My questions were answered already. Okay. Um, I, I have just one question, and it's maybe a little off the the primary concern. Um, there are some. There was a drawing that sort of illustrated the extent of the property that seemed to include the parking lot on the uh, attached to the. Uh, I have to admit, I guess it's the north end of the building over towards Cannon. Is that part of your property or is that um, uh, uh, or not? The sort of the second parking lot closer to yeah, the street. Yeah. I'm just trying to find a good visual to bring up here. It, it seemed to be included at, within one of the outlines, but it doesn't seem to be in any of the site plan. Yeah, it, it's anything. not part of this. Um, that parking lot is not part of this application. Here, I'll just share this for example. There's a there's actually a building in between the two parking areas. Um, so there's a building here. So it's just the corner the corner parking lot that we're looking at here. But but to my question, is it part of the property of this overall development or not? Um, I believe that there is. I think that I think it may be. I'm just going to take a look here. I don't actually, uh, I'd have to double check on that. I'm not sure if that parking lot is specifically part of uh, the property. Okay. Um, you have a bicycle storage in the lowest level there, and it's not clear how, maybe somebody can comment how you get bicycles to it. So there's a access door off of that uh, alleyway and you go down a few steps you're sort of at a mid landing when you enter you go down a few steps to the basement level and that's where the proposed bike storage is okay i don't have any other questions so i'll turn it over to uh the first panelist ted for uh comment harry great okay thank thanks for the presentation um uh this is a really great um, uh, project, and I think we're all on the panel. I think it's fair to say very excited about uh, you know what's being developed here. Um, this is a beautiful building. We've seen it actually on the panel. We've seen it a few times shown as precedents in Hamilton of what you know what they did, what the uh, city's uh, mothers and fathers have done right in the past in terms of industrial building design. And uh, you know this is an example of we're going to emulate this building. So it's great. To see it being brought back to its its glory from a heritage perspective, and assuming that you know PEG and and and, and this developer are really committed to bringing that back, um, you know, in, in its its strength and and respecting that heritage character. So very excited about that. Um, the idea of reorienting the entrance uh, to Cannon Street and creating the forecourt, I think, is you know a fantastic idea. It really is bringing um, urbanity and race um, to this part of the of, of, of Hamilton. Um, we saw a massive development next door, just to the west. Um, so there'll be lots of hungry um, condo uh, dwellers there. So this this the restaurant up top makes great sense. It, you know, and it, it is a really exciting proposition. So um, I fully support. Uh, those three elements to the project. Um, I guess where some of the concern I would have lies is just initially that we're looking at a restaurant when really this kind of urban space, the kind of larger heritage questions, the adaptive reuse questions are really the much more interesting ones from, you know, the panel's perspective and creating better urban design in the city. And this is a really uh, has a uh, project has great potential. Um, so I'll comment on some of those things. I think the urban space, um, this question of parking, does this building have a responsibility for parking? How is that being achieved? Is it, you know, to David's earlier question, is it on the adjacent property? You know, what are the requirements for parking with all of this office space? Big question. And, you know, thinking of that forecourt space as a plaza, as a public space, great. If it's, if it's basically becomes a, a kind of nicer parking lot, it becomes a far less satisfying proposition. Um, understanding that there's service reading requirements, et cetera, I would like to know 
much greater understanding of how that forecourt space works. I think it would be great if it was greener, if it had more intent about how people used it, um, benches and uses, et cetera. I think that there's a fundamental problem with accessibility here. Um, uh, you know, AODA really is very clear. If you are coming with somebody who has a disability to the building, you should be following the same path to where you're going in, in a building. And I don't think it's, it's, it's a problem that can't be fixed. I think that ramp should go up and not down. And, um, and I think they're about the same, approximately the same height. You've got an entire forecourt to, to make that, that ramp work. So, uh, don't know where you are in the process, but you might want to reconsider that approach and actually have that ramp and, and everybody arrive at this brand new grand staircase at the same location in the building, um, would be far more appropriate in my opinion. Um, I think that the arrival structure, um, it's, it's refined and it's very simple. So the quality of material and the quality of details for that and the restaurant and these structures up above, I think is very important. And looking at PEG's website and their work, we have confidence that that's going to be really well addressed and articulated and done extremely well. Um, so we look forward to, to seeing that. Um, I do think that there is something of uh, an opportunity missed with that lower space to be a walkout um, where it kind of comes out into the landscape. Can you step down into that space? Could it be a coffee shop 10 years from now as this area develops? Could it be retail? Could it be other things? I think there's some opportunities there that you might want to consider it as well. I'll leave my comments there, but very exciting. Uh, proposal and really looking forward to seeing how it how it evolves. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer Sison. Thanks. So um, thank you uh, for your presentations. And I agree uh, with everything Ted's just said. And building on kind of the front plaza recommendations, I think there's a real missed opportunity here with uh, the landscape and streetscape on Cannon Street. While it's obviously an improvement over the existing surface parking lot, it's still a lot of pavement and it seems to lack programming. I think it would really benefit from more additional planting, uh, some more seating, making that concrete wall that's screening the hydro transformer a bit more attractive. This area would also benefit from more consideration for thermal comfort and shading with additional tree plantings. Uh, incorporating more pedestrian scaled lighting, like you've shown under the benches, uh, and it may need further consideration of how people will really want to interact with the space. You could also explore movable seating if you need to keep the area paved for occasional vehicle access. And I was surprised uh, that there's no temporary bike racks here because Cannon Street has dedicated bike lanes on it, and I think that's uh, also a bit of a missed opportunity. Um, understanding the design here is fairly advanced. I think implementing even some of those measures could really make that frontage that much more attractive and lively. Uh, I appreciate that you've given us some internal bike parking, uh, the building facade in this area and how the future suite, oh, sorry, the planting on Houston Street, I appreciate as well, which uh, helps to soften the building facade in the area and how the future suite 101 uh, uses may hopefully be active to promote overlook of the street. I'm pleased to see the preservation of the existing character of the building and the heights and step backs of the fifth floor addition appear appropriate to me for the existing building and the area. Overall, I think it's a really good project and I look forward to seeing it built. Thank you. Uh, Eldon, I guess Eldon, we already decided he's not here, Joey. Yeah, I think we lost him. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with uh, Ted and Jenna on this. I think this is a, a very good and a very successful adaptive reuse project. It's great to see a project where the existing uh, building, the existing heritage building was considered first and how the design aligned with the qualities and characteristics of the building. Um, I just have a couple of uh, comments. Um, I know I said I wouldn't say anything about the windows. Um, but the windows are a very important attribute uh, to this building. Um, one oh, something that will unfortunately suffer as a result of um, installing aluminum windows is that you'll get the thermal thermal performance you want or you need, um, assuming the building will be insulated as well. Um, but you'll really <clears throat> lose the 
fine detailing of the Munton bars and also of the mullions. Uh, so I'm I'm going to suggest that um, when unless they're already designed that that there's a real real attention paid to the design of the Munton bars and that they are true Munton bars. If the Munton bars are concealed within two panes of glass, then you're really going to lose the quality um, not only of the windows or uh, but of both facades off of Houston and off of um, um, Cannon, which are the obviously the prominent facades. For the the new addition, um, I think in terms of massing and design and its simplicity and its relationship to the the heritage building, it works very well. Um, but there are elements in the addition that are a little bit misleading. Um, Mark, I appreciate that you uh, took your cues directly, somewhat directly from the um, from the heritage building windows. But in the same way that the cladding is distinct from the the original the, the cladding of the um, uh, heritage building, I think that the windows uh, could be complementary, but don't need to necessarily align so closely to the patterning of the uh, heritage windows. I think there's an opportunity here for for you to um, to do something more contemporary with that patterning. Um, maybe maintain the same size, but have something uh, have uh, muntins and mullions sort of reconfigured in a different way. And I think that will kind of you know further the distinction um, and you know in the complementary nature that the addition currently has with the heritage building. Um, thank you for a very good design and very good presentation. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer Mallard. Thanks. I echo my colleagues' sentiments. It's exciting to see uh, a careful, sensitive reuse of uh, historic building and it's being respected in its humble way, its humble beginnings, but, but maintained, um, maintaining the parapet line and setting back the addition, um, really important moves. Um, and the addition is in keeping with, uh, you know, an industrial rooftop unit. So I, I interesting comments from you, Joey, about those windows. It, I, I think um, the cues of how that should be detailed, and, and Ted said it, the success is really in the detailing of that, uh, using industrial materials, but using cues in a contemporary way from a industri yeah. industrial rooftop unit. Um, uh, uh, I think that's it. That's that works all my comments. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Hoda. Yes. Um, I I don't have any comments about the uh, addition building on top on its own. Uh, the only comments is the accessibility of that. Uh, that leads me to somehow the interior design and. Uh, uh, as uh, Jennifer said about uh, Unit 1, I was thinking that, okay, the people who are coming in the building and wants to find a way to go to the elevator and have access to the um, to the rooftop restaurant, that's a bit, I found it uh, complicated, and uh, it's better to find a way to lead them more easily. And uh, another point related to that, it's uh, what Ted said about the accessibility for the people with disabilities from outdoors. So the ramp is uh, going down, so I echo my colleagues at Ted who said that uh, the ramps is better going up and everyone who are going inside have the same way to get in, either the people and or people with disabilities. So these are comments related to the top roof also I would like to say that I appreciate to having the plaza in this area and improving the whole site by having the plaza. Uh, still, it needs more, more effort to work to, uh, and to design uh, animated and more viable area by having more furniture and programming that area and also having more plants to make the, uh, that uh, plaza uh, more comfortable and also inviting. Thank you. Uh, Jana. Thank you. Um, and thank you for the presentation and for your approach to this beautiful building. I 
agree with my colleagues, especially I, I love the building and I would strongly reiterate again that suggestions to redesign the plaza to achieve not just, you know, series of accessible ramps, but uh, more equity and maybe this could be achieved through a more interesting approach and creating some great and special plaza, uh, maybe different levels and so on. But other than that, I don't have any other comments. Thank you. Um, yeah, and wrap up, I, I think the, in general, myself included, I think this is a great project and really excited. I think we as a panel haven't been able to get together because we've been serving our entire session as uh, under the COVID situation. And we can only look forward to once your restaurant is open that we would be able to come and have our first in-person event. Hopefully we'll be able to have one faster, but I kind of agree with everyone else. Um, it's an excellent uh, you know, rehabilitation project and more power to what you've got going. There are certainly a number of things that we've identified that are opportunities for, for, for refinement that I hope that you will consider. It's not clear to us, you know, how our comments in that area really fit within this particular application. But um, I think there are, you know, we've flagged a few entrance accessibility, even the existing, uh, you know, the really beautiful entry, the dark deco entry that you now have re-entered to go down. You kind of can't wonder if you couldn't have it go up and down or something that might help, uh, you know, allow for the both floors to have some, at that location, have some access uh, sort of off the other street there. Um, I'm curious that about that other piece of portion of the site. I think that a, a project of this consequence, and of course, you know, somebody who's doing an excellent job, we only demand more of them. And so I would ask if that is actually your site, then I think that you have to expand your consideration in terms of the quality of the urban environment to include an examination of exactly what's going on on that existing parking lot. And, uh, you know, that it is also part of your approach to Canon. So I don't know if there's any clarity if there's a on that at this point, if somebody's been able to do a little quick yeah. research on that. David, I can speak to that. That parking lot uh, on Canon is not part of this property. We were able to confirm okay. that. Well, that's uh, it's good to hear that you guys are working with your whole site, but you do have a drawing in your presentation that's quite confusing. I have to tell you on that. Yeah, we did double check that. I think the I think the property previously there's maybe a mix up with the previous okay. property boundary, so we'll make sure to double check those. Okay, well, then you can, you know, ignore those last comments, but otherwise, I think in general, we are really positive about this. It's a great, great project and uh, go for great. it. Thanks, everyone. Really appreciate all the great comments and discussion today. I know we're working with the developer who's also very excited about the project and really wants to make this a great product. Um, so specifically, some of the comments on landscaping in the plaza and some other things uh, that we discussed and heard about today, we'll, we'll definitely take those back and and have further discussions on those. So thanks everyone for, for sharing those comments and, and highlighting those opportunities for us. It's great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Take care. Take care. Take care.